Hi everyone, my name is Nikki. I am the customer experience lead here at Looking Glass Factory. Today we're sort of doing a mini episode from our last video. You may remember Kath here. She is a character that Missy, our creative technologist, uh, sculpted in Blender. But before then, we thought we'd share with you some things that we think will be really helpful across all disciplines of uh, creation in uh, for Looking Glass for all looking glass displays really um, some four pillars and four concepts to creating great holograms so i say great here great holograms and, and that's to sort of imply that there's bad holograms and and there really isn't i think you know we're really excited for whatever experiments that come out of the community and our own team of course um, it's just there are certain things to pay attention to because this is such a new medium that we've done over experimenting over the last seven years that we've really come to you know kind of we want to share some of our learnings here so so you see calf here this is the first first quilt so nothing's really been done here calf has just been pulled uh, from blender into unity set into the scene around our hollow play unity plugin i guess one of the things to uh, pay attention to here is i'm just going to move her around a little bit sorry about that a little bit what we did is just to make sure that calf and especially her eyes are in the focal plane so focal plane is um, a concept that we talk about a lot here at looking glass factory because it sort of is the fundamentals of how our system works and how the hardware software optics all work together but really there is a focal plane so one plane in the middle of this whole scene where everything is in focus. Anything in front or behind that tends to blur out and you'll actually see that happen, you know, you know, with your own eyes as you're creating a looking glass portrait or if you have a looking glass portrait already in some of the demos, you'll see this very clearly in some of that, some of the demo and preloaded content that with your looking glass. So yeah, so this is all we did. We just placed her here, no background, you know, nothing, nothing more than just her in this scene. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of walk you through a couple of things here. So let's just jump quickly into the uh, next quilt uh, at address and reposition so from the name itself you can all assert that what we've done here is we've added a dress and so Kath is now wearing a, a clear transparent dress because we're planning to make the whole scene a little bit reflective adding you know lighting shadows and reflective surfaces it really holographic characters uh, objects and surfaces they really pop because of how a uh, light is is treated in this holographic display and so you'll see here immediately as I am as I'm moving the uh, looking glass portrait from uh, left to right you'll really see the light sort of reflect with this character and with this so yeah very uh, quickly jumping to the next next one in this in this series here so this one is definitely very obvious what we did here is add a background to the scene so in this step we added a plane a blue plane behind a calf here so that it can cast a shadow so like i said shadows are super um, important in the scene because it really can help to add depth so i'm just going to move this back and forth so you can see so you can you know like really gauge here that no matter what object is in here it could be it could it can even just be a cube so having a cube here without shadow will look super flat adding a shadow and being able to walk around the scene and see that that will be super effective in helping to convey the 3dness and dimensionality of an object in the scene now moving on to the next quilt here. So I'm just gonna go back and then go back here. So this might be, I think you can see that, right? So, okay, so there's some lighting adjustments being done here. So what we're doing here is we're playing around with shadows, shadows and positioning here a bit and just playing around with the light and brightening up the scene a little bit. Now, 
lighting I think is something that's kind of a gut feeling and, and how you light your scene really depends on what mood you're going for. So, you know, right here you'll see that a calf doesn't look very spooky at all, right? So uh, we've intentionally created a scene where she can pop, where she can shine, and she's a cute robot after all. If we want to make her a scary robot, what we could have done is reposition the light such that, you know, like, we could create a very, very spooky scene just by changing up the light a little bit um, without changing anything to do with the object. So that's really up to you on how you set the scene, just so you know how important uh, lighting is in this, in this process. Now moving on to the next one, we've also added a floor here because flooring just adds dimensionality to, again, the shadows that are cast on the floor itself. And then moving on to the next one. So we've added post-processing effects here because, you know, since we're using Unity, we went ahead to add this. Um, and primarily we did this for a few things, but for uh, depth of field blur, uh, which makes anything out of the focal plane feel softer and easy on the eyes. Now without this depth of field blur, everything outside of the focal plane that I, I was talking about can tend to look a little bit jaggedy and artifacty and this really solves uh, for that and in addition on unity you can use this effect to adjust things like bloom color and brightness and things like saturation which we've also done to this scene so on to the next one lighting so as you can see here after we added the post-processing effects this really affected the lighting in the scene from before you can see here very bright added the post-processing things darkened up quite a bit so we went ahead and did another round of lighting adjustments and so keep in mind that as you are creating your scene you can oh this this isn't a step by step one two three four process you can always go back and um, readjust your scenes and readjust lighting readjust background and really tweak the elements until you create something you're happy with but yeah here after you know like i said we added the depth of field uh, effects we again adjusted the directional light so that we really put her in focus we put calf's face in focus and then we we just made sure that the the scene was brightly lit again and then a few additional things until we get to the final uh, scene, but we're almost there, I promise. And just as a reminder, folks, uh, you can see in this uh, bottom uh, right-hand corner of your screen, we're actually showing you all the preloaded from Unity. So these quilts have been recorded out from Unity and brought into Holoplay Studio, which is the interface you see uh, down below here. And these are all pre-recorded out and uh, you can do the same for your artwork too. Super simple share your playlists share your quilts with everyone share them with us on our discord or on twitter look.glass slash discord and okay so next adding scenes oh no <laughs> adding props so here we have added some props to the scene so just like and, and i think as I'm going through this, what I've realized that what you're really doing here as you're kind of setting up your, your scene in uh, Unity or whatever software you choose, it could be Unity, Unreal, or even straight in Blender, is that you're really dressing up the scene as a, as a set designer um, or a, a photographer taking that perfect picture. So depending on what you're going for, you can add props, you don't have to, but props help to add dimensionality and it helps for, you know, like I think in addition to just the plain background, it can also help uh, for casting sh shadows. So you can see that here, the shadows of calf are being cast on that um, sofa there. And I know because this effect is already applied, but there is that depth of field that we mentioned in the uh, prior quilts, quilts that are applied here, which really softens the effect of things in the background. So in this case, of this sofa, and it just, it looks really good here. Okay, one more before the final. Okay, we've repositioned the cameras a little bit. So you see here, all of a sudden, like I said, curating your scene, really taking the director photography role here is, is really 
adjusting everything in your scene, adding other props, adding a rug, and adding a bit more narrative context to create the story that you're trying to tell. So I think in all of the, the principles of all of these things that I've talked about, which is focus, depth of field, blur, shadow, and lighting, all of these are just tool sets in which you can use in order to intentionally help to form the story or narrative um, of your three-dimensional holographic scene. And then finally, let's see what's happening here. All right, so... Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. All right, this is the final image that uh, Missy created. Um, in here, I can see that she's dimmed the light. We've adjusted the point light on a calf here to create a bit more lighting based focused for her. We also adjusted the uh, material on the dress. So instead of that clear dress that you saw uh, previously, the dress is now a little bit more uh, metallic. I think the intention was that the transparent effect was cool but the metallic reflection is even cooler because as you move around the object and let's see you can see that the reflection of the light the directionality really follows you so that really enhances uh, the dimensionality of the scene of the character in a looking glass um, so yeah, there you go. I am sure I am going to share this entire playlist at the bottom of this video. And I can't wait for you, if you have a looking glass portrait, to kind of go through all of these um, to see how they look on your looking glass portrait as well. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions and if you wanna start creating on your own, you can start by going to learn.lookingglassfactory.com where we have tons of tutorials for you to get started with. And if you want to join our community, as I mentioned, look.glass slash discord. Our discord server is a great place to start. We have over 3,300 people on it right now, all creating uh, content for Looking Glass and Looking Glass portraits specifically. So yeah, can't wait to meet you um, and thank you so much for joining us today. Bye now.